Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a quick tutorial for you. Um, this is going to be how I quarter my drivers. Now, um, I do not have a Northwest Shoreline quartering tool, although people recommend using those if you want precise, the most precise quartering possible. Uh, but for me, um, I've done, you know, many quartering jobs of wheels by hand or by eye, and it works perfectly fine and literally, you know, I, I, I've gotten perfect experience out of every single one of them. And that could be a sign that I'm just amazing and I have an amazing vision, but I really don't have amazing vision. Um, and it's just more of a sign that fact that um, doing it by eye is usually good enough. So anyways, uh, this is how I do it by eye. So if you guys didn't know, quartering basically means that the drivers on one side have to be set 90 degrees off the other. So for example, if you look at here, on this side of the wheel of the engine, the oh, the drivers have the crank pin at the 12 o'clock position. Of course, this engine's upside down, so it's actually 6 o'clock. But in this case, we're, we're looking at it as 12 o'clock. If you look on the other side, you can see that they're exactly 90 degrees off on, you know, in this case, it looks like 6 o'clock <clears throat> or 9 o'clock, I guess. But anyways, so they have to be exactly 90 degrees off. If they're not 90 degrees off, if you're like, say, 70 degrees or 80 degrees or even 180 degrees, they're gonna, this engine's not going to run properly. Um, and so that's why uh, quartering is critical to have one set of drivers on one side to be exactly 90 degrees off. And so this is very important when you're trying to reassemble these drivers. Like in this case, you can see I actually removed this wheel from this driver set. I was doing some repairs. I didn't record this because I don't feel like it's worth... Uh, recording uh, because it's such an obscure small issue but basically what happened with this driver real quick uh, before I tell you guys is um, the insulation the little red insulation as you can see there this insulation was broken and actually this wheel was contacting power so every time you put the engine on the track it would short out um, and I was just so frustrated by this I couldn't figure out why it was all the insulated drivers on the same side um, but it's still shorting out and so I finally took my multimeter out and I started testing and it turns out this wheel the insulation's been messed up and so anyways I got it repaired um, I'm not going to go into details on how I do that I will make a a forum post online if you guys are interested I can link it down below upon request um, but yeah anyways so right now I need to put this driver back on the wheel but the question is you know how do I put it back because it has to be 90 degrees so this is where quartering comes in <clears throat> Um, some useful tools for putting this wheel back on. You're probably going to need a Northwest Shortline quarter, uh, um, puller. This basically helps you push and pull the wheels back onto the axles. As you guys know, these wheels are press fit very tightly on these axles. And so when you put them back, you have to make sure that they're, you know, put back the correct way. Um, so a Northwest Shortline gear puller, this is a very useful tool. You can use it to pull axles uh, or wheels and gears off of axles and push them back on. So a very good investment. I'd highly recommend getting one of these. But anyways, um, you're all you're gonna need this eventually for pushing the wheel back on fully. But in terms of quartering, it's actually very straightforward. Um, the trick I do is this. So first off, you wanna make sure you wanna figure out you know which ninety degree angle is it turned? Is it turned clockwise or counterclockwise? So in this case, we can see that this wheel here, the one that's already on the axle, is the non-insulated, uh, or sorry, yeah, the non-insulated uh, wheel. We could tell because there's no insulation between the you know the wheel and the tire. Whereas this one, as I said, there's that red line that indicates the insulation. Um, and if you look on the engine itself, you'll see that this side has insulation, whereas this side doesn't. And so if we just simply place this wheel, the non-insulated side, to 12 o'clock, like that. And then we place this wheel um, to, in this case, 6 o'clock. So place it, look, it looks something like this. I'm doing this all with one hand, so apologies for this. But you can see, you basically see that this wheel needs to be pushed onto this axle in roughly this direction. So I'm going to just temporarily push this on just gently now obviously this is far from properly 90 degrees and also i'm, I'm not going to push this wheel in by hand for sure with one hand especially <laughs> that's crazy um but you can see that roughly you can see that uh this has to be 90 degrees off in this case on the left of the non-insulated wheel so now with this done we can do some fine tuning and so this is where um a piece of paper or something and also um either some tape or in this case i have silly putty um, is very it comes very useful and you know comes in the hand um, so you can do this two ways you can either I like to put a little bit of silly putty on a piece of paper um, and then simply just place this wheel um, on but you can also and so uh, but yeah so I'm going to explain how I do it here but for the record you can also do the same thing uh, instead of turning this paper you can actually just put this wheel on like a desk and then view it from both sides 
um, of the desk. So in this case, you'll see from like you know, this side and then this side of the wheel if you placed here. But I'm gonna just simply turn this piece of paper to show both sides. Uh, and again, you can use the a masking tape or silly putty. I'd recommend using some of this to secure the wheel onto the surface. So what you're gonna do is very simple. So first off, you're gonna align this wheel to make sure it is perfectly, I'm gonna close my laptop, uh, make sure it's perfectly 12 o'clock. Um, I'm gonna do this off camera later, but um, I'm just showing you right, roughly right now. That's like roughly 12 o'clock, I'd say. Um, and then you're simply gonna just turn the wheel around and then see if it's ex at exactly six o'clock. You can see here, it's a little bit, or sorry, in this case, three o'clock. You can see that it's not exactly, you know, um, at the three o'clock slash six, slash six o'clock position. It's a little bit high. It's almost, it looks like around 2.30. So now I'm just gonna simply, I'm gonna use two hands and I'm just gonna twist, you know, grab, grab uh, one wheel in each hand sort of like this, and then use the other hand on the other wheel and just simply twist it just a little bit to adjust it. And I'm just gonna uh, repeat this. I'm gonna just check again and then repeat until I finally get it at exactly three o'clock, or at least exactly where the two wheels are 90 degrees off. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is, I'm sure it's probably like 0.5 degrees or something off. It's definitely not exactly 90 degrees, but again, uh, eyeballing like this way is already very close enough. So as you can see on this side, it's at 12 o'clock. And then you see on this side, it is at exactly three o'clock, more or less. Again, it could be just a little bit off, but it's not, you know, off by a, lot, a, lot, a large distance. And that's usually, from, again, from my experience of quartering about two dozen wheels so far in my life, um, it's been more than good enough. So as you can see here, um, this looks basically good. And keep in mind, I didn't push this in all the way in the axle. This way, it makes it easy for me to adjust. Um, but now that it is in perfect position, now it's time to use the or the gear puller to properly um, put this uh, to properly put push the wheel back onto the axle. I can quickly show you guys this, um, although these are pretty self-explanatory. But I'll show you guys regardless. I'm gonna try to put this on again. I need two hands for this. I'm gonna place this wheel inside, and I'll show you roughly how this thing works. Okay, I have the wheel placed inside the gear puller. Um, and as I said, this thing is best suited for pulling the gears, but it can also push the, uh, or sorry, pulling the wheels and gears off the axles, but it can also push the wheels and gears back onto the, um, onto the axle. In this case, you can see here, I have the wheel. This is pushed against one side is this wall here, which is pushed against the uh, tire. And the other side, there's this long screw, which has a little pin. And this basically pushes, it's aligned to uh, touch the um, axle on this side. And so I'm not going to do it again because I only have one hand. But basically, if you put an Allen wrench through here and twist the screw, it will push on the axle and basically push it through the wheel, forcing it through the wheel. And this um, is much better than just hammering it in. You know, you can, you can just, I'm going to remove this from here real quick just to demonstrate. Um, you could theoretically... You could theoretically just place this on a flat surface, preferably an anvil, and then hammer it, hammer it in this way. But the problem is you'll see that, you know, this surface is not flat at all. And so if you place this on a surface and you hammer it, uh, it will, it, it might be able to, it might go in unevenly. And this axle might actually be forced into the uh, wheel sideways. And that's very, that's, that's really bad uh, for the axle and with the wheel that, that causes permanent damage. Um, and so I'd, I would not recommend doing that with your brass engines, but in a pinch, if you have to, if you must, um, that is possible. I would highly recommend getting one of these tools. Though. This is only like 30 bucks and it's easily worth the investment. Um, the quartering tool, as I said, I can live without. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to just finish up this. I'm going to reassemble it into this engine and that's pretty much it. Um, that should be the, that's the entirety of the tutorial. Uh, hope this helps someone out there. Um, I'm sure someone is going to, uh, I'm sure, you know, quartering is a fairly common um, thing that every every steam modeler should know how to do and so anyways i hope this video becomes helpful and yeah if you have any questions please comment them down below i'll try to answer or I'll try my best to answer every single one of them uh but yeah so on that note i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching take care bye oh last thing i forgot to mention i just pushed this gear in actually um is that you should always check the wheel gauge with the nmra standards gauge to make sure that you don't over uh, push the axle in or don't do it enough. So this way it ensures that your engines won't derail. Anyways, that's it.